Yorsi. Federico, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Raniero, for having me invited to this, um, uh, to give this, uh, to transfer my knowledge and my know-how and my experience to this uh, precious uh, audience who are uh, devoted, uh, who are willing to uh, adopt uh, participatory approaches and tools and methods uh, with uh, uh, disadvantaged people, I, I've, uh, I've understood from, uh, from the documents in, in this project. Uh, let me introduce myself very briefly. Um, I started in the late uh, 90s uh, in uh, um, working as a facilitator in uh, participatory approaches. Uh, so I managed uh, many, many meetings uh, and workshops uh, in which people had to not just to listen to somebody who told them what to do, uh, instead in which they had to participate and, and to create a common, um, a common product. So I, I'm a trainer because I, I also teach uh, planning methodologies, participatory planning methodologies in detail. Uh, I'm, I'm a facilitator and I am a coach uh, recently, in the last five years, uh, I also was uh, designated by the World Association of Business Coaches as business coach and team coach. But first of all, let's, uh, let's create something, a, a participatory um, uh, feeling among us. Let's do a, a warm up exercise because that's how you learn what participation means. I ask you to uh, click on the link on the chat and answer to this question. I just send the link, please. Go to the link. This is a, a Mentimeter, it is a polling tool. Uh, answer to the question. The question is uh, in one word, what is your feeling now? And then we will see how do we feel right now? Feeling and emotions are much more important than, than the contents in participation. You have to learn this for, uh, for first time. So uh, click to the link, answer once, two times, up to three times, and then we see what the results are. Okay, uh, fine. Fine. Now I will have to uh, share the screen, of course. Am I allowed to do it? Um, Raniero, yes. But I will wait for the people to... Um, 16 people have answered to this question. 16 up to now, 17. You're doing great. Okay, now let's see. I imagine that everybody had answered. 19, we got 19 answers. Because uh, we are more than this. We are 27, yes. But I assume that this 19, this is what just to show you. Okay, uh, let me show you what came out from this. Uh, share screening. Uh, Okay. Fine. This is what are these were your answers to the question in one word. What is your feeling now? So I see exciting, tired. Nice. This is nice. This is sincere. It comes from your heart, from your body. You're tired. Good. Tired. Uh, yes, I'm tired. Uh, happy, curious, excited, calm, enthusiastic, full energy, excitement, expectation, unsatisfied, curiosity, nervous, nervous. Nervous means that you, you, you are nervous a little bit, you're nervous. So I have to be careful about what I, what, what I will say. Uh, relax, energized, sleepy, enthusiasm, well, fine. Curious, cold, somebody feels cold. Maybe these are people from, we have people from Finland. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or maybe it's colder in Southern Italy or in uh, Tunisia than in, uh, than in Finland. Uh, somebody in, um, 
in Mediterranean countries, in the houses, uh, it, it's less comfortable, the climate, than in, in Northern Europe, where all the houses, the indoor places, are, are very, very well, uh, well heated. Full energy, calm, curious, hope, hungry. Somebody's hungry, give them a breakfast. Okay, uh, I'm not joking. And if you can see on the right hand side of the bottom of the, of the screen, you have the number of people who answered this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this question. This was just a warm up exercise. Uh, <coughs> this is a very, as you could experience, uh, uh, simple tool. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a free software. It's called Mentimeter. You have to pay for a professional use, but uh, um, any organization, any university can afford it. It's nothing uh, extraordinary. And it's very helpful because it's very simple and, <coughs> sorry, can immediately give you uh, the idea of what's uh, uh, in the minds of the participants. You may ask, uh, I could have asked, uh, I thought actually to ask you, uh, what do you expect to learn from this uh, uh, meeting, from this seminar? But I switched to something more, uh, um, more uh, intimate and more related to the feeling because uh, uh, I have learned something very important and uh, I will tell you from the beginning that the success of a, part of, of a, a, part a participatory meeting or event or workshop, however you call it, uh, what counts is the atmosphere. It's not uh, the quality of the charts of the maps uh, or, or uh, the things you produce. This is also important because if, if you produce uh, uh, something of low quality, this will appear eventually, uh, will come out. But uh, what counts is, is the feeling, is the atmosphere. So I prefer to start with, with a warm up exercises. So um, let me now start uh, uh, sharing the screen about the the contents of, uh, of the training. Okay, maybe I will put it, uh, let's see if you can see the presentation mode as well of my slides. Can you see it clearly? Okay, Any, uh, so the, the, um, the rules are that uh, if you have a question on the things I will present, uh, I will answer on the uh, five min 15, sorry, 15 minutes dedicated uh, to the question and answer time, uh, which is, uh, we started at 9.30, it will be from uh, 10.15 to 10.30 and from 11.15 to 11.30. Uh, we all know that this uh, training will stop at 11.30 a.m. right now. So uh, this is myself, but I don't want to bore you about this. Um, uh, let me just tell you, I thought uh, in, in my uh, preparing the course, I mean, it is not my assumption. We prepared the course together with the uh, UniMed uh, people in Rome that we could, uh, uh, I mean, what you could get from this seminar, uh, from this uh, meeting, or, would it would be an increased awareness of the logics that uh, rule um, the participatory process because there are some uh, uh, basic rules and logic which uh, uh, normally apply and that you, that that you have to be aware of or the, uh, no matter if you use the meta plan method or the uh, open space method, uh, there is the, uh, a logic and, and the model underlying uh, participatory approaches. Uh, being more able to involve participants during a meeting or workshop, because involve people during a meeting or during a workshop, uh, uh, it has to see with, uh, uh, with the feeling. Uh, it has to see with the, how people feel not uh, uh, about uh, what people uh, think uh, or, or what people know. 
uh, and increase your individual capacity to intervene in a meeting or an event. I will teach you, I will tell you some, uh, uh, let's say, um, techniques, or if you want to call them uh, tricks, hints, to, to be more uh, powerful and, and more uh, uh, effective when intervening in a meeting. Um, uh, get to know new methods, techniques and tools, because this is also part of the training. <coughs> there are, <coughs> sorry, also some structured and uh, uh, well-structured methods that people uh, use uh, around the world, uh, which uh, have uh, a name, and so you uh, have to know uh, if somebody tells you, oh, we made a, uh, an host, uh, an open space, uh, or we organized a, a, a hackathon. Um, of course, uh, you, have to, uh, you, get, you have to know what they're talking about. And uh, the... Yeah. yeah. The being able to um, also it's very important. Uh, the the other thing I've learned in, in um, twenty or more years in, in some decades of experience is that uh, um, uh, you uh, although uh, uh, many, uh, not many, I, I, may, I, I, I might say, some uh, structured method exists uh, when you have to um, plan a participatory event, uh, you have to design it uh, um, every time from scratch. It does not mean that you cannot pick up some pieces and tools uh, uh, and bricks from, uh, from s different methods, but every time you have to design uh, a tailored, a tailor-made participatory events. This is the, the very secret of our profession because uh, uh, things are always different. Uh, since uh, beginning of this year, uh, we have to uh, reconvert ourselves uh, to the online meetings. I never had uh, organize or run or manage uh, participatory meetings on the web like this. Well, this is a training. Uh, it's different, but I mean, uh, so uh, <laughs> nobody could imagine that this could happen. And uh, uh, being more able to manage participatory process, both in presence and, uh, uh, and, uh, and online. Okay, so this is the basic agenda for today. Um, first of all, I would like you to uh, understand and be aware of the importance of, of a good introductory session. Um, so we will talk about how important is the, are the first. There is a proverb who says, well, here there is a proverb who says, who gets off to a good start is half the battle. Uh, but there is also uh, another proverb who says uh, you don't have a second chance uh, uh, to make uh, the first impression. So uh, the first impressions you make in a meeting uh, um, with the people is probably they will uh, um, maintain in, in the rest of the meeting. So uh, let's uh, be uh, aware and be clear about the importance of the starting 15 or 20 minutes in a, partici in a participatory meeting, because uh, this sets the scene, I would say, for the rest of the event. Then uh, I want you uh, to be aware also of this uh, uh, model, because there is an underlying model in every uh, participatory, real participatory decision making. Sometimes uh, the, the, the decision is already made elsewhere, not among participants involved in that meeting. And so uh, if it's the boss who decides afterwards, after the meeting, okay, we can spend the time talking uh, uh, no matter what, uh, but the, eventually it's the boss uh, one day later, the morning after, who decides, okay, uh, these are the options, I will pick this up. So uh, this is not a participatory decision making. Then we will go into the 
interpersonal communication skills which are crucial which are key in uh, uh, in communicating uh, and in uh, um, having interpersonal relations during a meeting and warm and safe and confident interpersonal uh, relations with the people with the participants bearing in mind a lot of uh, variables because our participants may not speak our language there must be a language problem they may not be used to written language to write down things we uh, westerners uh, we assume that everybody uh, speaks and writes english which is some in many cases a wrong assumption you know uh, then we'll have a, a conversation about all these issues maybe we'll not uh, be able to uh, run all these issues in in 20 minutes time i see a, a third thing i've learned uh, uh, is that online the time really rushes away uh, then i will tell you about the main participatory methods available uh, on the market, in quotation marks, and then we will talk about uh, uh, how to uh, design an intervention. I mean, what are the key points you have to bear in mind when you have to design a participatory uh, a pro a participatory event? Because maybe a process is something longer than one event. It may made up of two or three events uh, uh, not necessary all participatory it may be uh, another kind of meeting uh, or, or workshop or congress etc uh, we will finish by giving you some uh, um, also examples of the online collaborating tool now used uh, um, uh, for uh, uh, co-creating and to uh, co-work uh, um, same people co-working uh, simultaneously in one tool uh, through the internet and then we will end with the question and answer phase okay uh, let's go ahead let's go ahead let's go ahead yes we will yeah okay please mute your mics thank any question anything okay uh, uh who gets off to a good start is self the battle uh this means uh, this is myself on the picture by the way this is a, a, a european project uh, in italy uh, i was younger than that now uh, as bob dylan says um in the introductory session, it's very important because people must be welcome, uh, of course, uh, safe. Safe means that they have to feel, uh, and you can do something to, do, to, to, to reach this goal, that uh, um, even if they say something, I mean, uh, whatever they say, uh, they will be welcomed and they will be appreciated. Imagine a, a, a young functioner, a young person coming to a meeting of uh, uh, people of age, experts, professors. It might, he, it, he or she may feel uh, embarrassed. Um, so uh, you have to make in such a way that uh, everybody who speaks even though uh, they speak uh, slow they speak uh, bad english or whatever uh, they feel safe to express what they think because uh, he or she this person might have a, a very brilliant and successful ideas so uh, just the fact that, that they are younger or they um, have uh, i don't know speech problems or, or they feel they ugly because people is like that people is make of miseries you know uh, they don't want to talk because they, they think they're ugly they're not uh, appropriate they feel inappropriate so uh, make them feel safe included and equally treated so uh, if you have 10 people around the table like i had that time for instance or 12 people we you have to make in such a way that all these people it feels uh, 
uh, fairly and equally treated. So give uh, um, equal time to everybody and not just start with the most important person on the table, start with anybody uh, in the room. Uh, let me go ahead. Um, there are some uh, important thing we need to uh, know in uh, uh, when preparing. Now I'm talking mainly in uh, about uh, event uh, in in presence, physical events, because uh, I suppose that uh, after 2021 we will come back to have uh, physical uh, events. Uh, we, we, of course, the online mode uh, will uh, diffuse uh, uh, a lot, but I mean, I have to assume, for God's sake, that um, we will uh, come back to meet uh, in physical, otherwise uh, there will be problems for, for the human race. By the way, um, there, there is something uh, that... Uh, um, um, Normal people, I mean, normal people, I mean, people who are not facilitators for uh, as a profession are not aware of, and it's uh, the preparation of the, the physical preparation of the room of the event. This is very important. Uh, many people underestimate this, but uh, if you want to organize a meeting for uh, 20 refugees and then uh, there are also 10 people for universities so you have 30 people you cannot hire uh, a, a theater like uh, location for instance you have to hire uh, a location you have to uh, dispose of a location where people can uh, make a, a circle so uh, it, it's, it is very important that uh, um, everybody sees each other, so uh, be aware of the importance of the physical preparation of the event uh, in terms also of uh, light, of coffee breaks, uh, and so forth. Um, it is very important. The second trick is uh, don't start uh, some, I, I, I know that even some participatory meetings have, have to start with a, a presentation of, I mean, why are we here, in which context, uh, uh, what do we expect from the people. Uh, but uh, my um, advice is before you give the floor to a presenter in a participatory meeting, please ask the people to introduce themselves. In this, uh, uh, well, this, this was not a participatory event, but I wanted to warm you up and feel you welcome with the feeling question. I guess, I hope that this made you uh, feel more, more welcome and more willing uh, to start and to listen to me instead of uh, start myself uh, um, with the presentation and, and, and with the lecture. So um, first, uh, create an atmosphere. What counts is uh, the atmosphere. So as soon as you create it, the better it is. Uh, and ask about, uh, maybe before presenting what the objectives of the meeting will be, ask what the people is expecting to get out from that, from that meeting. Uh, you might be surprised that maybe people are there, have come there, and they have a different, a different agenda. So take this into consideration. Uh, on the spot, in the very moment, uh, if you had planned something, something very different. So say, okay, what are we going to do? You came here because you want to present your project. Sorry, but we were here in order to um, exchange points of view about this, not just to uh, listen to your project. So uh, deal with this on the spot, on the moment. And uh, if you can do it um, innovatively, uh, there are, I mean, uh, we as trainers, as facilitators, as coaches, we, we know um, some uh, tricks, um, I would call them like that, um, uh, some tricks, 
For instance, uh, um, you can when you do presentation, uh, the, 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 the circular table in the beginning, you can use a, a ball, a basket, not basketball, sorry, uh, um, baseball uh, ball, a small ball, tennis ball, and basketball would be a bit uh, uh, difficult. And uh, you launch it to somebody, uh, himself or herself, presents himself, and then he launches to anybody. Or you can form couples, you divide the group into couples, each one presents himself, and then each one presents the other. Uh, or just as to draw, if you are, I mean, in 30 people, you can't do it, but if you are up to 10 people, uh, you just can ask people to draw anything that talks about them uh, personally or represent them and then they show it or say i mean if you are uh, if, if, if you want to spare time you can just ask please tell me three things name city and profession uh, federico rome uh, facilitate okay uh, let's go ahead um, uh, now we jump because uh, the introductory session is important. I want to give you some uh, some infos and tricks also on how to do this uh, uh, session when in remote. Uh, we will talk later about the, the the tools and the platform for remote meetings, but uh, I wanted to have this in the beginning when we were talking about the um, introductory session. Um, Ah, there, there is a trick I do love, and I use it uh, every, I don't say every day because I don't run uh, participatory meetings online every day, but every week I do, and is uh, show an object which talks about uh, you. Uh, I wanted to show you something. Normally, when, I'm at, when I do this, I start with myself and the two things that talks about me that I can find on my desk now are these two. Maybe you don't see it. Where is the, oh, I see. These are two coasters. Uh, the, the, the ones you use uh, uh, for not uh, uh, making stains uh, with a cup of tea or a coffee or a beer on your table. Uh, they represent uh, two covers uh, of um, a very famous uh, pop group uh, uh, who existed uh, in the, up to, to the late uh, 70s. Uh, I don't try to the names because uh, uh, they are the, the Beatles. Uh, I'm a Beatles fan. And so uh, people do like this. You, you do a circle of table and people may show, you, may show their cats or dog, or uh, the glasses they use, uh, the glasses they use, or something that they that represents them. I love this trick, and it uh, it, it it jumps you, it jumps all the audience in a very different atmosphere. Uh, or just round down, write down one word on chart that catches. Uh, uh, their feeling. Uh, it's what I did with you uh, 40 minutes ago. Uh, I, did, I, did, I didn't ask you to do it on chat. This is very primitive. Uh, there is a, a tool, a Mentimeter, which does that in a colorful way. Uh, and so I use this. Um, but you can do it on chat if you don't uh, want to use Mentimeter. So people say, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm cold. Uh, exactly as you do it as you did before um, or another nice trick in remote meeting is ask them where they are because in remote meetings people uh, connect to the internet uh, um, when they're at home or when they are in the office but mainly when they are at home so they can show you oh this is my bedroom this is my kitchen uh, this is where my son studies in the afternoon uh, this is where i stay because my husband is working on the other room this makes enter into people's houses is something that the online participation allows us 
uh, it, it didn't happen before in uh, presence meetings. And so let's uh, take advantage of it. Or you can ask them to draw an image and show it on video. Give them three minutes to write down an image, to draw, sorry, to draw an image and then they show it, they show it uh, on video and they say, uh, last time I was in a workshop with the, uh, an environmentalist um, uh, management team of an environmentalist organization and they uh, they needed to brainstorm about uh, uh, what they want to be in the future and they draw uh, an octopus an octopus but the, uh, because an octopus is also something very positive with the tentacles uh, to embrace uh, um, everything. Okay, these are tricks for online uh, meeting. Um, I told you that uh, um, it, various methods exist for running a participatory meeting. We will see them uh, maybe after the question and answer break. Uh, but what counts is the awareness of the underlying model. Um, the model I, I did not choose because it was uh, the best. Uh, it's the model I experienced on my skin, on my body, and I have noticed uh, any time I was facilitating and uh, assisting a decision-making process that uh, it uh, actually works like that, is the divergence-convergence model elaborated by a Canadian facilitator called uh, Sam Kainer. In the end of the slides that will be probably made uh, available uh, as a project resource, uh, you will have a list of um, bibliography that you can rely upon. Uh, imagine uh, you are uh, starting uh, um, a meeting uh, most of the times you may have the feeling that, uh, uh, okay, we will decide about this in 10 minutes, in five minutes, because, uh, uh, yes, we already talked about it in the last meeting, uh, the, the, uh, this, this, groups of pe this group of people already agreed. Uh, so you may have this uh, simple and straightforward and linear uh, image of uh, what will happen during uh, during the discussion. However, um, as the time passes during the discussion, you realize that uh, uh, people may have uh, different views and ideas uh, on what it's on stake. It's uh, it's on the table. Uh, what should be decided? Uh, complex problems. Uh, I mean, we are talking about uh, the solution of complex problem. It's not. I mean. Uh, a quarrel between husband and wife. Um, complex problems don't always have quick and simple solutions. So as the discussion goes around, uh, you realize that uh, you are plunging into a divergence, a, a big divergence of ideas and opinions. Um, uh, so it's important and that you are entering a kind of grown zone because after uh, you you imagine and maybe also the other guys in the, in the meeting imagine that this problem could have been solved in five minutes uh, you uh, instead you are uh, half an hour is passed and still there is a chaos uh, or what it's called in this model more appropriately a grown zone in, a mumble zone, um, a chaos zone in, in which uh, the diversity uh, of opinions uh, seems to uh, overwhelm the the, uh, the meeting. Uh, but at that time, at that time, you have to be aware that diversity of opinions is a psychological is psychological in a multi-stakeholders process in a. Um, not even in a multi-stakeholders process, it may happen also within a company, uh, in a group of uh, six or seven people that about uh, a complex problems or about any issue they may have um, different 
idea. So no panic, just deal with it. Um, now I'm quoting somebody else, uh, Patrick Lencioni um, is an American, he's an Italian originated American from the, from the name I could guess, who says that uh, um, it is paradoxical that so many people avoid conflict for the sake of effectiveness, whilst safe conflict actually allows to save time. Despite the idea that the teams lose time and energy in discussions, those who avoid conflicts are to come back several times on the same issues without solving them. So uh, what you have to be aware of is that uh, you have to, and we will see later on, we will see how with what uh, interpersonal techniques, uh, you have to allow people to have uh, room, uh, uh, safe, feeling of safe and time to express their own ideas. If you don't let everybody express in, in a safe um, and transparent way what they think about the problem and you have thus all the uh, proposals, all the visions, all the, all, all the opinions on the table, then you can come, you can um, uh, uh, bypass the grown zone, uh, the chaos zone, and get to uh, an agreement, a decision, a convergence, which is sustainable. Because what happens uh, in, in many cases, uh, in, 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 when this decision-making process is not held properly, is that uh, uh, some people come up with some solutions, uh, uh, maybe because they are hierarchically uh, more powerful to say, okay, we'll do like this, okay, the meeting is closed, uh, the workshop is finished, but from the, 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 tomorrow on, nothing will happen because the rest of the people did not agree or they were a bit skeptical, they didn't have the time to express their, skept their skepticism uh, in a safe way, uh, so they could even uh, uh, accept what was uh, decided and nothing uh, actually moves in reality because these people was not uh, convinced and so this was not a sustainable decision. I think that the experience I just uh, uh, told you uh, happened to many of you, uh, meetings in which uh, we thought we had decided something, but uh, uh, the following day, uh, in reality, nothing, uh, nothing moved because, I mean, all this process of uh, opening up the divergence, uh, uh, guiding in the chaotic, in the grown zone, and then um, finding conver convergence was not properly managed by the, by the leader or, or by the group themselves. So, so sometimes groups don't have a, an explicit and recognized leader. So I realize that now it's a, a time for a, a question. So if you do have any, put them on chat. There, I see one question. Uh, I will be happy to answer, but before I do it, I uh, switch this uh, uh, mode into the face mode so we can uh, see each other. But I still have to see the chat, sorry. Uh, so, um, uh, there was a question at the end. In this case, we can start with icebreak exercise. This is a question from Mutas Alduni. Uh, will be good for those people feel shame or uh, ugly? Uh, uh, yes, uh, if you start with a, with a ice, uh, starting with ice breaking is always uh, uh, good and positive in general because uh, I assume that the, the people who are meeting don't know each other. They are not familiar uh, among them. Um, each, one with each other. I, I assume this, of course, if you are talking about the group who meet uh, every week, uh, same people, you don't have to do any um, warm-up or ice-breaking exercise, that would be 
uh, felt as uh, perceived as uh, repetitive or stupid. But I assume, maybe I, I, I was not so clear about it, I was assuming that the, the people met for the first time at ice breaking or warm up exercise, for instance, in online meeting, the um, um, warm up exercise with the object is great. It functions uh, uh, very effectively. Uh, people are willing, are very happy to uh, to show their cat or their uh, uh, I don't know a picture. Uh, for instance, last time there was a guy who had built uh, all the shelves for the books and for the object in his room, and he turned the screen to show us, oh, I did all the shelves. <laughs> the mensole in Italiano, maybe shelf, I, I hope shelves is the right um, translation, uh, and so forth. Uh, um, for our form couples, uh, there is another question from Ar Arish. If someone doesn't want to introduce himself, what can I do to make him or her more comfortable? Uh, uh, there are facilitators who have different personal style. I'm a soft one. So if, for instance, uh, if I do this warm up exercise, show an object that represents you and one person doesn't want to do it, okay, I say, okay, fine, maybe you will do it later, or uh, I, I don't give importance, because maybe in this precise moment that that person may have a panic, maybe panicking, or maybe uh, may have a headache, or, or stomach ache, I don't know what, uh, why she or he doesn't want to do it. So, Okay, let's, uh, let's pass to the other person. Uh, uh, if form couple exercise, uh, this is in presence, or you can also do it online if it's the case. Uh, the, uh, when in presence, uh, if you want to avoid the circle of table, because maybe it, it, they are numerous, um, up to uh, uh, over 20, 25 people, uh, they are a lot of people. Uh, so if you say, okay, in 10 minutes, uh, um, uh, we will split into couples, maybe the people who are sitting beside, uh, just that. Um, uh, uh, so one uh, tells the other uh, person uh, who you are, uh, and then you do the other way around uh, within the rest of the, the five of the ten minutes, five minutes each, and then you ask um, each of them to present the other. So I will present my uh, colleague, and uh, she or, or 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 he present myself. And normally these presentation are. Uh, short because uh, when you summarize the point of view of another people uh, uh, you don't spend so much time you, you don't remember uh, so many of what she or he said and this is a uh, this is a also a technique to uh, familiarize and socialize uh, uh, with people uh, who don't know each other. So if they are there for the first time, uh, this is very adequate because uh, immediately you enter into intimacy with, some, with, with at least one of the group. And maybe in the rest of the day, you will do other exercise or other discussion uh, which will uh, make people socialize, but at least uh, in this case, uh, uh, you socialize with the person you have beside you. Any other question? I'm like a market seller in an uh, open uh, air market. Uh, who wants to buy my my fishes, I sell fishes. <laughs> okay, if there are no questions, uh, um, I would go ahead. I would go ahead. 
maybe we will recuperate uh, questions uh, later on. Uh, I ask you to uh, switch on your uh, um, audio, please. So uh, it will be easier for me when I share the screen uh, to, uh, to see myself. Okay. I see some background noise still, but uh, no problem. So we were uh, here. So um, take into consideration always when you run a meeting that uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, that this is the model you have to bear in mind. So you have to allow uh, in the beginning, after a sort of um, warm-up exercise or ice-breaking exercise, uh, which uh, uh, made the people uh, feel more safe, more confident, uh, uh, and also that the atmos ice-breaking, I mean, uh, means something, you, you, you break the, the, the ice, the uh, awkwardness that maybe may exist in the beginning of the meeting where people don't know each other. So after you did this, you enter into contents because you have to decide I mean, about the future of the village or how do we integrate in the society? So people may say, I want to, we want to be entrepreneur, we want to do the training. And you have such a divergence of points of view. Um, you have to uh, be aware that uh, uh, in many cases, not always because th these are not laws, uh, in, in, in participation, uh, there are not laws because we are human beings and we are subject to so many variables that uh, there's no one, just one law. But uh, uh, believe me, I managed, I facilitated so many meetings and whilst I was, I was facilitating in that very moment, uh, I thought I realized that uh, oh, the divergence phase uh, uh, is really uh, happening. Uh, uh, is it finished? Can I try to uh, orient the discussion toward the convergence? Or do I still have to allow people to express uh, more different point of views? Uh, you know, sometimes it's disturbing because um, the people, uh, maybe the facilitator, if he's not aware of this, may be in a hurry, uh, may be pressured to get to a conclusion, to a decision. Uh, that they start to be nervous, as, as one of you were in the beginning of this uh, uh, seminar. Nerve, nerve in terms of uh, uh, energy, not in terms of uh, being nervous. So, the question is, how can I help this process? So uh, I had divided your skills because I suppose that you will, uh, maybe we, you will not be appointed as the facilitator of the meeting, but you will have uh, some power to intervene more uh, um, uh, officially and more often in the discussion. Uh, I uh, suppose that you're a kind of uh, uh, group leader, group manager, uh, team leader, whatever. So, but this counts and has an effects, effects even though uh, you are not the appointed uh, leader or the appointed facilitator. So, first thing in the divergence phase, these are the uh, skills you, you may uh, concretely um, using the divergence phase. The first, uh, uh, the, the very first moment is the brainstorming, the generation of ideas, gathering ideas. So you ask a question, how do we, the, the key question, we call it as facilitator, how do we involve, uh, uh, how do we integrate uh, disadvantaged people, displaced people into uh, European societies? Uh, there might be various uh, answers. Uh, um, in that case, uh, 
um, you have to, it's important that, that you uh, defer or suspend the judgment. Please don't judge, don't make a content comment on each intervention. Don't say, yeah, uh, you, you're right, but uh, you have to uh, just accept uh, any, any idea. Uh, clarify uh, the issue, the question, if you have the feeling that people are answering uh, something different, that it's out of topic, but just reminding what the topic is. Ah, the, 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 base, the key question was uh, how to integrate uh, disabled people, uh, displaced people into European society. If you uh, uh, hear that people answer different things, it may happen it may happen uh, but do this only if you really have the impression that the, uh, the other people misunderstood maybe your question was not clear and value every contribution uh, even though this may uh, this is uh, um, uh, uh, to some extent false because you are thinking into yourself that what he or she's saying uh, it has no value, please value every contribution by, or physically, if you are in present, just smiling, or with a sentence or with a word, uh, thank you very much for your contribution, Mr. or Mrs. X or Y. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we value a lot your contribution. Thank you for having contributed. This helps participants to feel welcome and safe. This is not falsity because you have to assume a, a neutral, a, a kind of a, a neutral point of view. Maybe what he's saying or she's saying that it may appear to you a bit silly in the beginning, maybe it, it may turn out to be the actual and more clever solution eventually. You don't know it yet, so don't be arrogant and accept and value every contribution. Um, there is another technique I want to... Uh, we cannot practice it in this uh, online seminar, but this is very important. Maybe you have heard, you have heard of it. It's called in different ways, mirroring, parroting, um, uh, paraphrasing. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, we facilitators use the technique of uh, repeating, uh, using the same key words of the participants, what the participant has just said. Oh, so Mr. Kelly, you just say that uh, um, you think that uh, the, the way to integrate uh, um, disabled, um, uh, disadvantaged people into European societies, uh, uh, providing them training, is, is this what you said? Uh, this has uh, uh, two F Im immediately, Im immediate, immediate effects, <laughs> sorry. The first is that uh, the person who spoke is uh, highly gratified because if the leader uh, invested the time and effort to understand what you said and is able to repeat it, uh, you feel gratified. Imagine uh, the case of a younger person, of, the, of an insecure person who thought that he just said uh, a stupidity. This uh, reinforces uh, the, uh, the feeling uh, of the person. Second, uh, makes it makes clear in front of the whole group uh, the point of view, which was just said. And thirdly, you can uh, use this uh, uh, to um, orient the discussion towards your uh, uh, purpose. For instance, uh, if I say, oh, what you say, Mr. Kelly, is that uh, we should help um, these adventure people by providing them training. Are there any other, if you want to open up the discussion, are there any different uh, views, uh, different opinions? Or if you want to orient it towards the convergence, okay, do we all uh, agree about it? Uh, so, uh, these are the three immediate effects of, of this uh, mirroring or, or parroting or paraphrasing. Of course, in some meeting we have uh, translation. 
uh, if we have a, a con not consecutive, yes, consecutive translation, not shu uh, shutage, it is difficult to say so because you have to re um, uh, sometimes uh, uh, re, re listen uh, uh, or, or maybe you have to take out your your earphone and the communication is uh, is a bit difficult. So you paraphrase more than mirror the people because you you only catch uh, the uh, you can even do this after a long intervention in, in, in some meetings you cannot uh, have uh, you cannot uh, uh, interrupt the speaker you have to wait until he or she uh, ends uh, speaking and so you say oh by the intervention of mr uh, uh, Arafse, um, uh, we uh, had this idea. We came to know and uh, to learn that this, this, this. this. Uh, ca can I invite somebody else to express different uh, feeling, different view? So you use uh, what has been said to orient the discussion towards your uh, your focus. Uh, okay. Um, uh, we still have encouraging, this is uh, important in informal meeting. Uh, sometimes, uh, uh, I mean, after one hour of uh, intense discussion, you may note that uh, uh, some people did not intervene or they just made some uh, uh, very, very, very little intervention, very short intervention or so. Uh, you have to help them to speak out their mind. So encouraging. Oh, we, we uh, just by saying, oh, we didn't hear the opinion of uh, Amina and Mutaz about this issue. Can you please, Amina and Mutaz, uh, speak out your mind and uh, let us know uh, what is your feeling, your opinion about it? Uh, can you please? Uh, of course, you don't do it in the very beginning, just uh, uh, interrogating Amina and, 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 and Mutaz like an FBI interrogation, of course. But uh, you do it when you uh, notice that those people uh, did not uh, intervene and reinforcing is also very very important uh, it's this is similar to what i was saying in the beginning about the value heavy contribution to show positive reactions this may be just physical just a smile uh, just your posture uh, of course if you listen to somebody else uh, i mean in a lazy gesture or posture uh, like this, the other people may, may, may feel that you're bored, absolutely bored, which may happen because sometimes facilitators are, are bored with what the people say, but you, you don't have to show it, it's your professionality. You have to show a positive reaction. Okay, fine, fine, C can you say more? Great. Um, uh, reinforcing is very important sometimes because there might be people who felt um, excluded. So uh, the key word here is uh, in the uh, divergence phase is to uh, include all the points of view, uh, all the feelings, all the doubts. Because sometimes people may not have a strong opinion. They have simply doubts uh, yes i would do this but okay let's express this but let's have it now we are in divergence phase because otherwise we will keep this but until the end of the process and maybe this but will uh, jeopardize the whole uh, the whole project and the whole things okay um there are also other skills during the uh, we, we can use during the uh, the grown zone um, the grown zone is where uh, people may be uncomfortable because uh, everybody realized that uh, that discussion that we started uh, uh, maybe one hour ago uh, in which everybody had the feeling that in 10 minutes we had uh, solved it uh, is still 
on the, uh, on the table of the discussion, we didn't find a solution. So um, uh, the, the, the skills of the facilitator in this uh, grown zone, in this mumble zone, in this chaotic uh, moment, uh, are the following. For instance, uh, draw people out. So, sometimes, uh, I think this is a common experience for all of us, um, sometimes you notice that someone has um, uh, wants to say something, but is not able to refine their, uh, their saying, maybe it's a language problem, uh, he or she doesn't manage uh, the, the common language of the meeting that well, and so um, she or he struggles uh, to, to uh, make out his mind or her mind. So you have to assist this these people. Uh, so, uh, so you want to say uh, that uh, this works like this, and they, is this what, what you want to, to say? And the, uh, uh, the participant answer, uh, yes, to some extent, but I, only, I, I also wanted to highlight that this and this. So draw people out, uh, take them away is, is, is a very important technique. Paraphrasing is always important because uh, um, sometimes people forgot what was uh, one of the uh, initial intervention, which may be the solution of this whole discussion and of this chaotic phase. So uh, if somebody repeats it, please uh, uh, take the ball and paraphrasing, so uh, what to say that we should do this and that. Uh, and now you, you can ask, do, 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 do you all think that this can be a practical, feasible solution for the discussion? Balancing. Balancing, uh, I, I already made an example of balancing, is when uh, maybe after paraphrasing, or not necessarily after paraphrasing, you may uh, uh, ask uh, uh, force it to other opinions because uh, there are two or three guys over there who spoke in the first circle of table, uh, but they didn't speak anymore. So uh, ask them or, uh, uh, or ask the group if you don't want to uh, normally, um, uh, uh, I mean, asking something to a specific person uh, with the name of her or of him uh, may be a little, a little sensitive. People um, might feel like interrogated and we, in general, we have to avoid this. Uh, uh, so saying, Andras, what is uh, uh, European? So don't use it, use it also in uh, uh, I mean, when you feel inside yourself that you can use it, that the feeling in the group is nice, so you can use also the name. In general, you can, you can ask for other ideas, because maybe what we are missing in the divergency, convergency process are uh, um, new contributions, new ideas, different ideas that did not come up yet. Uh, so ask for other ideas or insights on the key point of discussion. Is there, I mean, uh, uh, are there any other ideas on how do we solve this, uh, these problems? Uh, and maybe you uh, turn your head towards those who didn't speak for, for a long time. Of course, it, it's implicit that they will be um, uh, 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 naturally invited to speak, if you turn your head towards them, of course. And in general, uh, uh, give room means give to participants equal time to intervene. You have to balance this in general. Um, of course, uh, when you reach uh, the, the, the convergence phase, there might be one or a small group of persons who intervene more because they are the natural leaders. And so they lead the group uh, towards a, a discussion because they are, for many reasons, uh, they are less shy, they are more uh, outgoing, uh, they are more competent, uh, they have clever ideas, uh, they are hierarchical, uh, uh, more uh, 
uh, empower than others, so they might lead uh, the discussion of the group towards the convergence. And, uh, but in general, be careful of giving equal time, because in a meeting what counts uh, is the time you have to speak in front of the group. Uh, the last uh, hints, the last um, trick is to keep track. Um, uh, you see the, the picture in the right uh, bottom uh, side of the screen. Uh, this is not myself, I guess. I'm not that tall. <laughs> uh, it must be somebody else. Uh, um, but there is a board with uh, all the cards. So normally we as a professional facilitator, we use uh, uh, mobile boards or we use a, a wall in which we um, hang uh, some uh, big uh, sheet of papers. And normally we ask participants to write down on these small cards and we hang them on the board and then we, you can you can make diagrams you can make uh, mapping you can make uh, uh, plans or metrics uh, uh, depending on the purpose of the uh, event if it's a planning workshop or it's just a, a, a research work in analysis for instance this is very very effective you ask uh, to a group experts uh, uh, who are the what are the problems that now jeopardize the effectiveness or the competitiveness of small and medium enterprises uh, all the people write down in cards you put them on the boards and then you um, group these uh, answers according to the uh, type of problem. Some expert will have uh, written down uh, uh, problems related to financial issues or other to uh, human resources, other to uh, external markets, uh, other to whatever. And so you say, you, you can, you summarize and say, okay, um, according to our audience, uh, the main problems of the small and medium enterprise are related to financial issues. Uh, human resource issues and then you may choose on which of these to uh, intervene uh, and this is a decision making process okay so um in a more uh, informal meeting when you are when you when you don't set up such a uh a structured board uh, big board etc you just take notes with your pen and your in your block note or you may ask some uh, somebody else to do it uh, but it's very important otherwise you lose everything okay let's go ahead <clears throat> what are the uh, the skills needed in the let's call in the convergence phase when you are uh, near the end when you are approaching the final decision normally uh, you um, you you perceive in the group uh, a more relaxed atmosphere uh, because people are, are less tense uh, because they envisage uh, a solution a common decisions uh, but you may do something in order for this to happen uh, the trick is simple, is to reinforce those opinions that envisage shared decisions. If you feel that uh, the majority of the people um, arrived eventually to agree or support uh, a certain view or decision or action, etc., reinforce this. Oh, so we all. Uh, it, it, it might it, it, it appears that we all uh, converge towards this uh, uh, decision or this solution uh, uh, and so you have to start with the closed questions so uh, not how anymore not why anymore but uh, uh, do we agree uh, closed questions are those questions who admit uh, as an answer yes or no 
Um, can we say that uh, in order to close, uh, to narrow uh, the discussion? Or uh, if, you, if the grown zone is really tough, is a really, I mean, if people are um, disoriented, it may happen. Let's say, okay, let's go to take a coffee that will make up our minds. And it, just the fact that people uh, stands up, goes to another room, uh, they form an, a different circus of discussion. This guy talks to that guy who was uh, 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 very distant on the table and they drinks coffee or tea which, or uh, whiskey, <laughs> which gives a different feeling <laughs> to the people. When they come back, uh, things magically, in quotation marks, nothing is magical in uh, in human things, but sometimes if it's not magical, it's difficult to explain in words. It's, it's related to feeling emotions. Just the tiredness. Sometimes people are tired of discussion and so they accept a certain conclusion. And so, and then find the common ground, see convergences and guide discussions accordingly. Oh, so do we, do, do we all agree that we should uh, organize the, the meeting before the, the, okay, okay. And, and this is dog, please take note, everything, uh, keep note, keep track of all the decisions, the, uh, expect, especially of the uh, common things, the key points, the decision, not the, the, the whole, it's not the, um, I'll say in English, the minutes. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you are asked or required to write down the minutes of the event, like a steering committee or a scientific committee, okay, you have to do it. But now I'm talking about just uh, writing down the, uh, the crucial things because they are, are useful for further discussion for the uh, next phase of the discussion. So, uh, a question came to my mind while I was preparing this uh, uh, transparency. Transparency is a prehistoric uh, way of saying uh, PowerPoint or slides. Uh, <laughs> uh, mm, uh, which participatory events are you about to design and run? Because I had no clue about this. So, uh, I, don't, I don't ask you to answer now. Uh, on chat that would be too complex and time consuming. I will introduce to you the five methods uh, which are the most consolidated and known that some of you may have uh, even uh, uh, participated into or heard about it. Uh, and then I will tell you how to design yourself uh, um, a meeting, what are the uh, key elements that you have to take into account when designing your own meeting of the RAIS project, US area, you will meet uh, 15 uh, uh, displaced people from uh, Afghanistan or Syria or Iran or Burkina Faso, uh, together with the three of you, how do you organize? They will give you two hours of time because they might be very busy. They don't want to lose time with you. They think that you make them lose time and, and nothing will happen from this meeting. I'm joking, guys, of course. Um, but go ahead. So the first one, the king, uh, in my opinion, of the participatory method is the open space, the open space technology called, uh, um, also known as OST. You can see from the picture uh, how it is organized. Uh, the people gather in circle. If they are numerous, they make uh, various circles. They may be standing or seated. This depends. And uh, um, uh, the facilitator uh, takes uh, maybe 30 minutes to introduce uh, uh, how the event will work 
normally this event will 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 last uh, one day one day and a half two days and can be organized up to uh, with an audience up to even 400 people um, so it's a large group uh, event technique and the facilitator just say um uh, now uh, uh, we are we are starting this open space of course there is a, a main theme a predefined agreed main theme how can we help disadvantaged people to integrate themselves in european society this can be the key question the main theme uh, then uh, the facilitator ask anybody uh, to go in the middle of the of the circle introduce briefly very briefly himself or herself hi i am federico uh, i would like to talk about uh, um, the experience of the um, uh, entrepreneur entrepreneurial uh, uh, training for uh, um, syrian women uh, the experience we had in Germany, uh, I, I want to talk about this. And there is a board uh, in which you have a kind of a, a sheet in which you have uh, the slot time, the time slots, and also the rooms, because of course you have to do it in a venue, in a location where you have several small rooms for small groups. Okay, so he um, takes this uh, sheet of paper saying entrepreneurial skills for Syrian women in, in Germany and put it from 9 to 10 uh, in the blue uh, room. Then uh, uh, any, any other uh, proposal? Then comes uh, Marina Manchenko, goes in the middle and say, I am Marina Manchenko, I want to talk about the, the problems of uh, um, motherless children uh, in uh, Afghanistan, uh, mo Afghani motherless children uh, who, who can't go to school. Uh, and I, okay, uh, I will do this from 10 to 11 in the uh, yellow room. And so you fill the board with all the subgroup themes and the people then uh, sign up for uh, these uh, um, subgroups. In each subgroup, there is a kind of rapporteur who just uh, uh, writes down what is being said during the group. And, it, and there is a final uh, circle of all the people at the end uh, of all this uh, uh, subgroups uh, which have turned uh, during the, uh, the, the event in which uh, in a big board uh, there can be a common action plan uh, not common for all the people but for some groups of people because they decided that, it, that they want to start uh, a, a work group on models child children uh, uh, in, uh, in Germany or whatever um, and uh, what are nice are the laws of this uh, event. The laws are the following. Uh, whoever is there is the right person. I mean, if you launch a thing and you find with uh, some people in, in that room, it means that those people were the right people for speaking about this. So it's kind of a, um, uh, uh, I would say a new age concept of meeting in which uh, uh, what happens is what uh, what naturally uh, will happen. So, so the, the second law is whatever happens is what was supposed to happen. Uh, so uh, if a uh, natural leadership uh, comes out, uh, don't be afraid, etc. Uh, when it starts, it's the right time. So if you gather with some people and you start talking about the coffee or the weather, it's okay. Uh, then you have uh, 30 minutes or one hour to talk about the contents. Uh, when it starts, uh, it's the right time. And when it's over, it's over. You don't have to accomplish to discuss for one hour time in your group. If after 40 minutes, all what uh, should be said, is, it's said, okay, it's over. When it's over, it's over. And this is, a, uh, I uh, attended many open spaces and believe me, it's very energizing because you really feel free 
and the people feel excited not to hear and or to listen to boring PowerPoint presentation, but to propose their own uh, uh, problem or issues to the public. And uh, if uh, you propose uh, a thing in a room and nobody comes, okay, uh, the, 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 the method tells you, reflect on why nobody came to your group. Probably your, uh, your theme was not uh, felt as important by anybody. Okay, accept it, uh, nothing happens, let's go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, Lego Serious Place is the um, uh, uh, most uh, uh, fashionable method at the moment. Uh, um, I'm not familiar with that. I'm not a serious, a Lego Serious Play a certified facilitator because um, uh, the Lego itself, you know, Lego, you can see what, 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 what it is. Um, certifies facilitator. It's based on the concept of serious game. Um, uh, uh, the, the, the conceptual basis is that uh, um, uh, when uh, they are implied in a serious game, adults uh, um, are more clever and it's based on the uh, concept that the knowledge comes from hands. Uh, it's it's used now. It's uh, at fashion in companies uh, uh, when they have to replan a strategy. Uh, so all the uh, team members in a management team they uh, use their hands to uh, move. Uh, I don't know the plant from here to there and. Uh, uh, this is uh, basically uh, the concept of legal serious play, that knowledge comes from hands. I will be brief on that because uh, uh, it's not my business uh, and uh, you have to be certified. I don't imagine, I don't believe, I don't think that uh, you will use it for your, for your purpose, but people will tell you about it. Now it's uh, the, the name uh, of the moment. Uh, GOPP, this is something that uh, uh, Raniero Kelly and myself know very well because um, it's a, a structured way to plan projects. Uh, it's a very structured method invented by the Germans, by the uh, National uh, German Agency for Technical Cooperation, for International Cooperation, to allow a group of up to 19, 20 people, no more, to plan a consistent project using the logical framework metrics, which are very consistent metrics, uh, general objective, results, outcomes, outputs, uh, deliverables, activities in maximum two days. So uh, it is well known in the, uh, in the um, technical, international cooperation sector. Uh, World Cafe uh, was also fashionable up to uh, two, three years ago. Uh, it's, uh, it's good for managing a discussion in, uh, um, in a large group of people because there are facilitators who act more uh, actively um, co uh, comparing with the open space in which the participants really take over the event. Um, there in the World Cafe, the participants, as you can see, are seated on a, a small uh, four or five of each uh, seat on a table with some coffee. It's very American. Um, and, and then they turn because the facilitator asks questions, they write down the answer on the flip chart, then another group takes uh, the coffee in his hands and go to an, another another table and look what the others have done and they add something. So um, uh, it is very useful when you have to uh, make a discussion progress and developing within a large group of people so with a structured guide, uh, unless the host facilitators guide the process. 
The hackathon, the hackathon uh, is quite new. It's mainly used in the IT business. It's a kind of uh, contest. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the Dell com uh, computer company launches an hackathon and says, we need uh, a new program, a new software uh, for, uh, I don't know, making this uh, uh, product to communicate with this other product. Uh, immediately groups of experts are formed, they work hard on this uh, uh, software development the whole days, then they present it and a jury, a committee awards uh, uh, the brightest project. Believe me, um, no, not believe me, uh, I'll tell you that uh, this has been used uh, in uh, a lot also in uh, um, uh, uh, sectors and business uh, different from the information technology, such as uh, uh, medical, social, cultural. Uh, you may launch an hackathon uh, on uh, uh, how to promote uh, the um, Afghani food uh, uh, in Europe, and then small groups form. Oh, we, we, we will do a website, we can do, a, uh, I don't know, whatever, an app. Uh, so this is Hackathon, and there is the, uh, another one which is uh, uh, which started in the late uh, uh, 60s, Appreciative Inquiry, who still has uh, a lot of uh, supporters. I never attended or facilitated an Appreciative Inquiry meeting. Uh, it's very um, free in terms of structure. It does not have a, um, a, well-defined structure, but what counts is the, um, the, the basic concept of appreciative inquiry, of AI, which is not artificial intelligence as an acronym, it's an appreciative inquiry. Why is appreciative? Because it starts from the concept that uh, uh, every community has something eff effective something that already now, something that works. So let's concentrate on uh, the good things, the positive core, and uh, from this uh, we can develop and we can elaborate new development. So normally in this kind of meeting, uh, uh, people go on stage uh, and say, oh, I saw a video in which uh, the people of Kolkata India, represent some representatives because Calcutta may have, I don't know, 10 million inhabitants at least. So they were some representative of the, of the Calcutta population. They come to stage, even uh, small, uh, small girls, uh, young people, and say, oh, in Calcutta we have a lot of um, parks, of green areas, uh, so we, sh we should use uh, the green areas for uh, le let the people gather and exchange points of view or exchange goods uh, or do free markets whatever and then of course uh, uh, those who rule the whole decision process uh, the leaders etc et uh, they could draw a, a final uh, uh, decision or uh, indicate they can draw some, some good uh, ideas or indications or suggestions to do something positive for for the community okay but in the end uh, uh, let me tell you that uh, apart from host, uh, which uh, sometimes it, it is entirely uh, organized, but also in this case uh, uh, it may be mixed with uh, more traditional methods. Uh, I attended many congress, conference, and conference events in which there, were, there, were, there was uh, the initial afternoon, which was the uh, presentation and welcoming speeches by uh, local authorities and so forth. Then there was one day, one entire day of open space, and then the final morning, uh, 
uh, on a two days event, three days event uh, devoted to the final speeches of uh, local authorities, uh, agent, national agency, etc. So uh, normally what you do is a mix uh, um, of methods uh, or maybe you invent something new, picking up not even methods but pieces, bricks of the methods. So, uh, what is important to have in mind when you design a participatory event? Uh, who and how many participants will attend? This is important because uh, if you have 10 people in total, it's very different uh, uh, from when you have uh, 200 people. You may have 200 people in some cases. Why do they come there? What do, what do we want to achieve? And what in your mind are their own expectations? Because uh, you have to uh, imagine at least uh, why they come. They might be obliged to come sometimes because of many reasons, uh, you know, life is uh, uh, multifaceted, so uh, people may be forced to come to your meeting or may be willing to come by themselves, uh, it depends. And what is the thinking process? What is the strategy you put in place as a, a facilitator, of course, as a meeting leader, as an event leader, to reach that objective considering the time and other kind of constants. For instance, if you do a GOP workshop, the one I told you about uh, doing projects, if you do this with a population who is not familiar with the written things, you can't do this because the GOP is based on, uh, on people who write down in a short way, something typical of the Western culture, uh, a sentence. Uh, but this may not apply in case of other populations. So that, that there is a time constraint always. Sometimes people ask you to do a participatory meeting with uh, 200 refugees uh, uh, in a couple of hours. We meet uh, in a theater in a couple of hours. Uh, uh, we decide uh, uh, in a participatory way what to do with them. I mean, you you have to say we, we can't reach this objective within this time frame at least at the minimum we can uh, hear to some uh, needs uh, to some issues uh, but we cannot do all this and so you have to consequently uh, after you decide the thinking process consequently plan sessions and facilitation techniques. Okay, if you want to reach this objective at the end of the day, first I will do uh, two hours of uh, problem analysis, uh, then I will do uh, one hour in uh, um, setting which uh, problem groups are the most pr uh, pr priorities, the priorities, and then I assign um, small groups to the priority which come to, uh, out uh, with actions, okay. This is what I mean. Prepare logistical aspect in advance. I told you this in the very beginning of this uh, uh, training, of this lecture. Uh, the physical space, this is something that uh, normally people uh, don't consider, uh, misvalue, uh, especially when working with that number. And plan what type of reporting is due. Uh, if you have to write down minutes, you need somebody, a person dedicated to this. If you have everything already on the board, you just take picture and that's fine. Okay. And then plan support and follow up actions in the case. So uh, now is the time to uh, tell you something about the online participation. We are online. So um, I, uh, what I listed here are the main commercial platforms uh, that uh, I, have, I, I have seen being used uh, uh, recently because I use, uh, I, I frequent uh, and run online uh, events and participatory events uh, since uh, uh, February last year, uh, this year, sorry, 2020, before I did everything in uh, physical, in presence. 
So, uh, the main platforms, uh, maybe you are more uh, expert than me on, on this, are uh, Zoom, this one we are in now, Cisco WebEx, it's another one I have seen used uh, several times, Microsoft Teams, some companies uh, use it uh, as a standard, and Google Meet, I'm not familiar with, with, with Google Meet, I have to tell you. Uh, the last two ones, uh, videofacilitator.com and Kiko Chat, uh, are suited for uh, um, open space type, open space like uh, uh, meetings when people may move from one breakout room to another voluntarily. In Zoom, this is not allowed. Uh, you know, in Zoom, you can create subgroups, breakout rooms, but the participants cannot move. There is a, a host who manages all this. Uh, video facilitator and Kiko Chat, the, 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 the lower picture is from Kiko Chat. It's quite uh, um, pleasant from the visual point of view because you enter into what they call gardens, main gar central gardens. And then uh, when people in the open space technology come out, I want to speak about this, they assign you uh, another garden in China or in India or in South Africa or in Brazil with this kind of nice picture. So this gives a little bit, then it's a, it's a, a Zoom platform used uh, behind, but it's mixed. Uh, Kiko chat, uh, it's mixed with Zoom. I will not enter into technical details now. Okay, now we'll have the chance to uh, practice a little bit uh, um, one online tool. We already experienced uh, the Mentimeter. Now we, we will uh, explain the uh, mural, the mural. So uh, let me now change the, um, uh, the, the screen sharing because uh, uh, I will have to Sorry for, um, for this, but I already prepared this, okay. So now I invite uh, uh, my colleagues from Unimed. This is a kind of, a sort of a, a pre-organized example to join me on this uh, mural. I will share the screen, of course. Uh, otherwise uh, you won't see. Okay, uh, this is a, a common uh, a common space uh, we share. You can see Raniero Kelly is already there. Um, I, will, I will ask Raniero and Emilia and uh, uh, the other guys who could uh, join me to uh, uh, answer to this question and they will do it online now while we are there. If you double click Emilia or Raniero, um, a small card will uh, appear and then you can enter your question, your answer, sorry. Set up arrows. How can we help disadvantaged people? Maybe I will do one myself. Uh, by providing training. Okay, this is my idea. Keep or, um, look at the left side of the screen. There is a, um, a, a black bar and you can add uh, um, uh, icons. There is a big menu of icons. For instance, what is a nice icon I can add? Uh, the, uh, I don't know. Uh, the bulb, the bulb. So this is a bulb and it's here. Two bulbs or we, we can add the dollar, money, money. Okay, money, money, give them money. You can even um, uh, attach here, uh, uh, copy and paste a link from uh, um, YouTube if, if, you, if you want to add uh, uh, a song, for instance, or there are there are there is a database or image which is very rich. For for instance, if I write down beach, 
I don't know why I, I uh, had girls because I typed beach. I don't know why beach. Okay, no girls. Beach. 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 <laughs> There is a, 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 a word joke which I okay. Somebody had the uh, the, the slide in PowerPoint. Okay, uh, uh, C C C C. Now, oh, this is nice. Okay, so now we have C. This is too big, of course. I will put it down here. So I just typed C. And I, you had a lot of image of, of C here. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is nice. I love this. Uh, okay. So uh, this is, if you look at the uh, uh, um, right hand in the bottom, in the bottom, you see you see that there is a, um, actually the mural we're in is much bigger than the part we are uh, filling in with our uh, images or uh, pictures or uh, uh, the, uh, so here you can see in which uh, tiny part of the whole space uh, we are uh, moving of course when you become more familiar you can uh, oh i love this you can even uh, change the shape of the um, uh, of the of the cards uh, of course uh, switch type for this my bank providing training switch type uh, circle so it's a circle instead okay um, I, I think we we will close now this uh, Example, I thank you so much, uh, uh, the guys from, uh, from uh, Unimed, Emilia, Martina, and Raniero for helping me to show, just to show how this could work. But I think with, that with some exercise, uh, um, anybody of you could use this uh, mural. I mean, mural uh, talks by itself. Uh, for, uh, and this can overcome the problems in uh, written communication. Some culture and some people are not used to, uh, to talk or to write down things. It would be easier for them uh, to express uh, uh, with a view, with a picture, or with the songs. Uh, uh, whatever. So now I close this uh, um, uh, screen sharing. Um, I open up a little bit uh, the PowerPoint. Uh, no, this didn't work. This was the same. Uh, share screening, Microsoft PowerPoint. Okay, okay. Um, Fine, uh, let's see, uh, um, I will stop sharing. I will give time to, uh, to uh, questions. Okay, I think that the question, thank you for your appreciation, Tariq. Uh, sometimes uh, there is a question, sometimes in the meeting we face people are aggressive and careless. Uh, we can give them more attention than others too, and give them little leadership to make them more care and quiet. You mean attendees? Uh, if you mean attendees uh, who are aggressive and, and careless, uh, uh, of course, give them attention, but give them the same amount of attention of any other groups of person, uh, or try to solve this beforehand. Uh, sometimes you may have the chance to meet these people who are supposed to be more aggressive uh, and, and, and careless uh, and so try to solve this before the meeting. If this happens in the meeting, you didn't have time, it may happen, uh, give them attention uh, with all the tricks I learned you, I, I taught you, sorry, 
um, smiling, repeating, paraphrasing, but not more than others. They don't deserve more attention than, than others who are, more, uh, uh, who are less aggressive and speak less. Uh, first, when start meeting, we make a game to break freeze between people in the meeting. Great idea, Tariq. A great idea. Um, I, to I already told you what counts. It's the atmosphere, much more than the product. So don't be uh, worrying about how oh, I have to uh, produce a plan by the end of the meeting. Uh, feel, uh, uh, make people feel well. If they feel safe, they will produce anything. Um, I have to go. Uh, the training is recorded. I believe that the methods and design independ in the number of participants and the space of the hall or meeting room. Of course, uh, Mutas, this is a very important observation. I told you before that uh, uh, designing a, a participation uh, has to take into consideration uh, the number of people and also the location you have. Uh, sometimes the locations uh, are not suited to that number of people or are not suited to the work you want to do and uh, you have to deal with this you do it and, and any anyhow because uh, otherwise you cancel the event you can't do this uh, but if the atmosphere is good uh, the location becomes less important uh, thank you for trying to agree with you uh, Training is the best method, excuse me, but is there a link to participate? Okay, please send me the meeting recorded. Any other question? Maybe even, even on, on the mic, we still have five minutes. Uh, any curiosity uh, you may have on chat or even on the, on the mic? You can open the mic and ask me a question. Uh, Uh, Federico, you should explain maybe that uh, Mural is a commercial product and you might be required to, to pay a license to use it. Thank you very much, Raniero. All these collab online collaboration tools I listed, maybe I did not mention them all because I was in a hurry to show you Mural. There are the Google Docs, who are excellent, Word, Excel. Uh, but the, the mural or Miro, or even Kiko Chat and Video Facilitator are commercial products, commercial software products who require uh, a, a paying subscription, uh, which might be uh, somehow expensive because it depends also on, on the number of people uh, you want to run meeting for. If you if you buy mural for using with a hundred people, that would cost you I don't know uh, sixty euro per month. Uh, I mean, which is more than uh, seven hundred euro per year. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Federico very much for this uh, extensive presentation, uh, um, <clears throat> and I especially I do hope that. Uh, it will be useful for you in your future work. I think you picked up uh, a lot of uh, very useful hints and, and uh, suggestions and uh, professional advice. Uh, <clears throat> so thank you very much to everybody. And uh, the next training is the day after tomorrow at 9.30 with Anna Sneek about the responsible research and innovation, which is a different way of, con of, of, of considering a participatory approach. So we see more or less the same concept uh, seen from a different perspective. Okay. And Federico, if you want to attend, you are most welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention today.